Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with lesson number five in our Arduino tutorial series on how to build a non-axis inertial measurement system. I will need you to pour yourself a most excellent and large mug of iced coffee. Please do not put any sugar in it. No sugar is needed. And more than anything else, don't put any of those little yellow or pink cancer packets, okay? Just straight black coffee over ice. That is all you need. I will also need you to get out your gear where we left off in lesson number four. Just as a reminder and as a recap, we are using the Adafruit Most Excellent BNO055 non-axis inertial measurement sensor connected to an Arduino Nano. If you do not have your hardware yet, check the description down below. I've got links where you can pick up this hardware. This is going to be a pretty uh, getting advanced uh, project that we're doing and it really helps if we're working on the identical hardware. Don't email me and say, oh well I'm using this other sensor and it's not working. Okay, I'm showing you how to make it work with a very specific set of hardware. Now you can learn from this and then maybe you can go ahead and use it on other systems, but as you're going through this class you really need to be using the same hardware that I am using. I also need you to get your code out where we ended up in lesson number three. Uh, this is the code. If you don't have this, you can go back and watch lesson number three in this series, or you can go to www.toptechboy.com. Look up uh, non-axis IMU lesson number three, and the code is there, and you can run out and grab it. Just to remind you where we left off in functionality, we were going out to the sensor, and we were grabbing the data from the accelerometer, and then we were printing it out, and then we were getting results like this and I will go ahead and kind of reset the sensor here and then you can see that we are getting the acceleration in the X direction, the acceleration in the Y direction, and the acceleration in the Z direction. Okay, now this is the thing that we're going to do today. We're going to talk about calibrating this sensor. And what I want you to see is, is that if you look over there at the acceleration in the Z direction, remember we talked about this in lesson number three, even though it's sitting still, you're seeing an acceleration, you're seeing that vertical acceleration vector due to gravity. Okay, so gravity is pulling the sensor down and so it sees that acceleration of gravity which we know is 9.8 meters per second squared. But what you see is the reader, the sensor isn't reading 9.8, it's reading 10. Well you say that's pretty close, yeah, but how well the sensor works, it's or how well and how precise the results we're going to get is going to depend on how accurately and precisely it can measure that gravitational vector. So we don't want to be seeing 10, we want to see be seeing 9.8. Well, there's a reason that we're not seeing perfect results, and that is that if we just go out and we just start grabbing data from the sensor as we are here, we're looking at uncalibrated data. We need to calibrate the sensor, and that's what we're going to learn how to do today. We are going to learn how to calibrate the sensor. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some lines of code to this, which will allow us to calibrate the sensor by moving it around uh, combined with some commands that we're going to send here. <clears throat> okay, so trying to think if I need to explain anything else. Nope, we're just going to jump in and we are going to start getting this thing, uh, jump in and getting this thing calibrated. So the first thing that we are going to need to do, let's see, uh, okay, first thing that we are going to need to do is we are going to need to set up some variables and uh, we'll kind of do the calibration as we're doing the measurements and you'll kind of see what I mean in a minute. But we need some variables to put those calibration numbers into. Now this library that we're using from Adafruit, it's kind of a C-ish a C-like, sort of like C type of library. And so they're using some variable types that you might not have seen before. We're used to ints and floats. Well, there's some other kind of byte type uh, variable declarations that are very efficient and they use those. And specifically, the variable type they are using is UINT8 underscore 
T. Sounds a little strange, but it is a very efficient variable type. And I did not do that right. It was UINT8 underscore T. When I give it that variable type, you see it turns blue. It, rep rep it recognizes it as a type of variable. Okay. Now, what do I want? Well, I want the overall system calibration. So I will have a variable called system. I want the gyro cal calibration, which I will call gyro. I want the acceleration the accelerometer calibration, I'll put that in Excel, and then the magnetometer, which I will put in MG, and I will set those equal to zero. So I've just declared my variables and I've set them to zero. Don't get hung up on that. Mute 8. <coughs> it is just an efficient way to store data. Okay, now I've got to send the command to the BNO55 to get the calibration data, to go out and start calibrating and get the calibration data. I got to go back and remember when I created this object, when I created this object for this sensor, what did I call it? Well, I come up here and I see I created it as my IMU. So when I send commands, what do I send the commands to? I send it to my IMU. If you're getting lost, go back and watch lesson number three. Okay, so now I'm going to issue the command, my IMU, <coughs> I'm going to issue the command to get calibration, and then uh, I've got to tell it what variables I want to bring the data back into. Well, I want to bring it into the variable system. What's the deal with the and sign? This is passing variables to and from a function. If you don't understand it, go back and look at my first Arduino tutorial series on passing parameters to functions, and you'll understand the and, or you can just put it in there. And gyro and mg, don't forget your commas. So I have. Uh, System gyro, I forgot accelerometer, so I'm going to put it as and system and gyro and Excel comma. All right, so let's look at this. I'm sending a command to start calibrating. <clears throat> I want you to return to me the overall system calibration, the overall gyro calibration, the overall accelerometer calibration, and the overall magnetometer calibration. And then I've got to close my parentheses and put my semicolon. So you see this calibration is kind of complicated. That To get it calibrated, you have to get the accelerometer calibrated. You have to get the gyro calibrated. You've got to get the magnetometer calibrated. And those are going to be coming along as we go and then the system calibration kind of represents overall how are you doing so to get the system calibration good you have to get the three sensor calibrations good another thing that I have to explain there's kind of like different levels zero is the lowest most uncalibrated then you go to one then you go to two and three is fully calibrated so what we're going to want to see is we're going to want to see the gyro come up to three. We're going to want to see the magnetometer come up to three. We're going to want to see the accelerometer come up to three. And then the overall system should be three. Now, why did I start with gyro? Because the gyro is the most easy to calibrate. To calibrate the gyro, all you've got to do is just let it sit still. If it's sitting still for a few seconds, the gyro calibration will come up to three. Then the next thing you got to do is calibrate the magnetometer. What I find is just swing it around like that a few times, the magnetometer will get calibrated. Then we've got to calibrate the accelerometer. That's the trickiest one, and you kind of want to show it that gravitational vector in different places. So you want to move and hold, move and hold move and hold and hold for about three seconds and let it see that gravitational vector kind of hitting all of those different accelerometers and then that will calibrate. Acceler the, the 
gyro and the magnetometer take just a few seconds. It might take 30 seconds to a minute to get the accelerometer calibrated. Okay, so this is the command that goes out and starts the calibration. And right, this is in the loop, so it's going to kind of keep doing it. Then what I want to do, I want to print those values out so I can see what they look like. All right. Now remember that as I do print, 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 I'm printing along a row. And here after I printed acceleration, this is the actual acceleration, the measured acceleration. I did a print LN so you would go to the next line. <clears throat> I'm printing more data along that row so I want this to be a print. Okay. Now what do I need to do? I need to serial dot print serial dot print and this time I'm going to print the accelerometer uh, the accelerometer calibration and so what was that Oop, I better print a comma I'm sorry and remember the comma is just the delimiter that's separating the data and serial dot print what do we want to print first the accelerometer calibration number and then serial dot print and then another comma and then serial dot print and then now what accelerometer gyro what is the gyro calibration number okay serial dot print and now I'm going to print another comma okay and now serial dot print and what am I going to print I'm going to print the magnetometer calibration and now serial dot print okay a comma. All right, now we're going to bring it home now. We're going to bring it home. Serial.println because this is the last one. And what are we going to print? System. Okay. So this will print the acceleration in X, Y, and Z, and then it will print accelerometer calibration number, gyro calibration number, magnetometer calibration number, and system calibration number. I will need you to hold your breath as we try to download this. Oh, it's going to work. Download, download. Boom! It downloaded. Now we don't know if it works or not, but at least we got it downloaded. Okay. Are you ready to take a look at the data that is coming off of the system? I'm going to hit the serial monitor here. Okay. And let's see if we can get this thing to pop up. And I'm just going to go ahead and reset it here. Okay, notice how when I reset it, we're getting zeros. Uh, let me see if I can... I want you to see this, so I'm going to clear the output. I'm going to clear the output and then hit reset. Reset, clear the output. Okay, now what I want you to see is initially we don't have any calibration at all. Then we get to this point, and just because it was sitting, what went to three? The gyro. Very easy to calibrate the gyro. Just let it sit still for a minute. Now, if you have this on a moving vehicle and it's shaking, the gyro is going to have more trouble. To get the gyro to calibrate, you need to let it sit still. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the auto scroll back on, and we see as it's just sitting there, the only thing that has happened is the gyro has calibrated and uh, the other ones haven't. So, what's the next easiest thing to calibrate? The magnetometer. So, I'm going to get this and I'm just going to move it around, and boom, what happened? the magnetometer calibrated, and even the system calibration is kind of coming up and happy even though nothing has happened on the accelerometer. But really we want all of these things to be calibrated and so our task now is our task now is is to try to calibrate the accelerometer because also if you still look at those uh, accelerometer measurements it's measuring that gravitational vector at 10 and not 9.8 so let's see if we can uh, fix that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of give it a 45 degree angle to look at and I'm going to hold it there for a few seconds now I'm going to give it the other 45 degree angle and again, this is rotating around the x-axis. Let it look at that for about five seconds. I'm going to give it the 45 degree angle along the y-axis. All right, let's see if I can give you a little better view here. Okay, there you go. 
So I'm giving it a 45 degree angle along the, the y-axis, rotating about the y-axis, the other 45 degree angle about the y-axis. Now let's see, let's give it upside down. Let it have a few seconds there. You see this thing is not in any hurry to calibrate. I got a one now. Okay, let's give it this other one. Okay. Now let's come back and see if it's happy. Okay, you see you show it some of those and then you come back to the kind of rest position and then it is happy. Okay, let me get all the junk out of the way and let you see this. Okay, look at that. We are fully calibrated. Now I want you to make note of that acceleration vector, that, ex that gravitational acceleration. It's now measuring at 9.8, 9.8, 9.78. You see, boom, we are getting a much, much better measurement of that acceleration vector, which means as we use that, as we use that gravitational vector to do things with, we're going to get more precise results. And so we can see now that we have got this thing fully calibrated and we are ready to rock and roll. All right, let me just show you another kind of thing about calibration. Okay, so hold on just a second, please. All right, so it is just sitting there, calibrating, calibrated very nicely, right? And all of a sudden, for no particular reason, we lost our magnetometer calibration. And because the magnetometer calibration went south, the system calibration went south. What happened? Oh, I just happened to pick up this motor and I put the motor by the, uh, by the sensor. What did that do? The motor has magnets in it and those magnets mess things up. Now you can see as I move it away, the, uh, as I move it away, the calibration came back, although it's still not really completely happy. The other thing that sometimes will help on the the other thing that will sometimes help on the magnetometer calibration if you ever have trouble sometimes it wants sort of like a figure eight could just be old folklore or old wives tales but it seems like that is something the figure eight can help the magnetometer if you are ever having trouble okay let's look at this man we are getting good calibration data and we are getting a very very strong and very very accurate measurement of that acceleration of gravity which we know to be 9.8 meters per second squared hey let's just pick up where we left off now on lesson number four and let's call up that serial monitor okay let's call up that serial plotter I should have said we showed you how to install this in lesson number four and let's look at our data there okay remember to get to the data we've got to come up and for me I'm on COM5 you might be on a different COM you can go out and see wh which COM you're on all right I'll show you how to do it in case you guys don't know how to do that I will come up here you come up to tools and you come down to what port and you can see that the Arduino here is on port 5 that's how we have been talking to it so now I will come back to our serial plotter data window I will come down and I will set this on COM5 okay set it on COM5 and then I need to open it okay boom Boom! Do you see that? We are seeing the, and remember how we set our labels up last time? So we can see that that green is looking at the Z acceleration, which is that vertical acceleration vector. If we turn it upside down, that Z accelerometer is seeing minus 9.8, plus 9.8. Now I can look at the Y accelerometer by rotating along the Y axis. Okay, 
Do you see how that y is going from plus 9.8 to minus 9.8? And then I can even look at the z, I can look at the x, and the x is now plus 9.8, and the x is now minus 9.8, okay? So we are seeing the data coming off of this accelerometer. Let's also look, if I accelerate in the x direction, you can see the red really moving. If I accelerate in the y direction, you can see the blue really moving. And if I accelerate in the z direction, you can see the z really moving. Okay, that's kind of uh, just a follow on to what we did in lesson number four. What I want to do is remember now, instead of sending three data channels, we are actually sending four data channels. <clears throat> so over here, under data format, you click data format, you see how that was set on three? We now have how many channels? Six. So I will go four, five, six. <clears throat> now if I come back to plot, you can see that those extra channels have shown up, and so I'm going to turn off those first three data channels, and I'm going to turn those off by, uh, excuse me, Somebody just walked in and opened my door, and that is complete nonsense. Okay, so what I'm going to show is, uh, oh, wait a minute, we had seven, right, because we had four calibrations, so I need to set this to seven. Okay, so I'm just looking at number of channels under data format. Now when I come to plot, I'm going to plot channel four, five, six, and seven. Well, what was four? I believe that was A, acceleration, we'll call it acceleration calibration. Channel 5 will be the gyro, gyro cal. Channel 6 is the magnetometer cal. And then channel 7 is the system cal. Okay, and so now we are looking at those calibration data. So we're going to come back over here, and if you look at the uh, auto scale, what I want to do is I want to not auto scale, and since my numbers can go between 0 and 3, I want my axis to be between minus 1 and 4, and that way the data will always be on the screen. Okay, and look at this. I'm getting pretty nice data, and look at the little legend here. The legend is showing like I would expect, and so that's pretty, uh, that's pretty neat. So I'm going to come over here and hit reset, and when I hit reset, we should expect all of these things to go to zero because it's going to have to recalibrate. Okay, so I hit the reset, and they all go to zero, but boom, do you see how quickly that first one, the accelerometer gyro, I mean the gyro calibration, it came up to three almost immediately. Now we're going to try to get that magnetometer up. Okay, look, you see the magnetometer's coming. I'll give it a little, okay, now the magnetometer is calibrated. Now we have the tricky one, which is the, uh, which is the accelerometer. So I'm going to come and show it the 45. I'm going to show it the 45. Okay. And guys, when you show it these things, leave it for a little while. I'll show it 45 about Y. The other 45 about Y. I'm going to show it completely upside down. I'll show it 45 around upside down. I'll show it 45 around the other one. And now I'm just going to let it go back to the rest position. Okay, and there it got it. So sometimes while you're moving it, it doesn't come up to calibration. Sometimes you've got to kind of put it back and just let it sit there for a second, and then everything will come up calibrated. All right, now look at what's kind of neat. I can come in, and let's say I just want to look at z-axis. I can turn the z-axis on over here. I can turn those acceleration numbers off. And in this case, I think I will set my scale from uh, minus 20 to 20. All right. And uh, look at that now. Okay. So now, as I go upside down on Z, it goes to minus 9.8. Right side up, it goes to 9.8. 
And then as I gradually turn it, what happens? It gradually goes. Now watch this. I'll rotate around the x-axis. And as I rotate slowly, it comes to 0. Rotate slowly, it goes to minus 10. All right, guys. It's, uh, I want you to think now. OK, I want you to think. And I'm going to give you a homework assignment now. Like, I want, OK, I, I want to show you this. Let's see if I can show you this. I'm trying to think of how to do this. All right. I'll just turn the camera over here to this mess. I want you to see if you can tell me, looking at the data, what did I just do to the unit? What did I just do? What did I just do? OK. I tilted it, right? And you could tell I tilted it without even looking at the camera, right? I tilted it up to the vertical where it, that Z accelerometer is, is orthogonal to the gravitational vector. It sees nothing. Now it sees the negative of the acceleration of gravity. And now back to the positive. What could I use this sensor for? I could use it for measuring tilt. OK, so this is what your homework is for tomorrow. What your homework is, your homework is to adjust your program, to make an addition to your program where you can measure. This is simple and crude, but a simple and crude measure of the tilt. Now, right here, in the tilt about the x-axis, right? And the x-axis is like this, all right? So this would have a tilt going from 0, right? It's not tilted from 0 to 90. And then this would be a tilt of 180, OK? 0 tilt, 45 degree tilt, 90 degree tilt, 180 degree tilt. OK, so what I want you to do, your homework for uh, for the next lesson is to go in and do a calculation that will kind of create a rough approximation of tilt based on this z-axis acceleration. Now if you want to, uh, you can also see that there's action going on with x. I'll give you a hint that we're looking at rotation around, you know, tilt around the x-axis. You see the x did I just lie to you? I did lie to you. Should be Y. OK. Rotation around the x-axis is tilting the Y. OK. Rotation around the x-axis. This is the x-axis. It's not changing. It's Y that you're lifting up. So do you see that I see a signal when I am rotating the y-axis? I see a signal on z, and I see a signal on y. All right. You can use one or both of those signals. But what your homework assignment is, it's to go away and show me what tilt you have based on these two signals. Now, I'll give you a hint to really do it you've got to use a little trigonometry, SOHCAHTOA. If you don't really know what SOHCAHTOA is, maybe go to the Khan Academy and do a little quick review on simple trigonometry. But you'll have to do a, a little bit of trigonometry. You'll have to draw a picture and do a little trigonometry in order to turn this into uh, a tilt angle. And again, I'm looking at, uh, right, I'm tilting around the y-axis, which means I am tilting. I'm looking at tilt around the x-axis, which is bringing up the y-axis. OK, that is your homework assignment. You guys, leave me a comment down below if you were able to do the homework. OK, leave me a comment down below if you were able to do the homework, what approach you took. 
and then coming up in lesson number six I'll show you how I actually do it okay Paul McCorder from TopTechBoy.com. If you guys like this, think about giving us a thumb, thumbs up. Think about subscribing to the channel. And think about sharing this with other people. I will talk to you guys later.